Yeah. And this is a picture taken uh, with Mao Zedong uh, at the peak of the Cultural Revolution, really. And I was uh, invited again to be on the Tiananmen Gate Tower where the parade was being reviewed, and uh, I asked him to sign my little red book of quotations from Chairman Mao. Even by the standards of 20th century China, Sidney Rittenberg's journey is extraordinary, from US soldier to communist cadre. But he paid for his devotion to the new China with 16 years in solitary confinement. He was horrified by the corruption of the Guomindang. You would go down the road in a province like Hunan, the rice basket, and you were never out of sight of corpses on, on either side of the road because strings of refugees, and they went as far as they could, and then they dropped. But we weren't allowed to do any direct relief. It all had to go through the KMT relief organization, which meant that it went straight into the black market. But in a communist-controlled area, the young idealist found something very different. It was clean as a whistle. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better relief work. It's like living with the stories of the early Christians, that kind of... Ed, the, the top leaders lived very frugal lives, ate very simply. He soon threw his lot in with the party, aiding propaganda and monitoring foreign media at the communist base in Yan'an. We were able to get the Guardian in Yan'an, mostly in Chinese, because Mao had these little papers printed twice a day which were translations of foreign periodicals and newspapers. He was rubbing shoulders with the men making history. No big deal to meet Mao walking along the pathway somewhere. On the weekends, I would go to the Saturday night dances and sometimes go to Mao's cave and, uh, and play gin rummy with them. And that was great fun. Very relaxed. You know, they would... Uh, cuff each other around and tease each other and uh, Mao loved to play but nobody cuffed him around <laughs> my main impression of him was this man was the best listener I had ever met in my life I was an unknown American and yet he asked me questions about America and he listened as though I was the world's leading authority in contrast to Mao in later years under the after the PRC, in which he came through as someone who basically holds forth, is not that good of a listener. And I think that's one of the fundamental changes. By early 1949, the communists were ready to march into Beijing. Stationed just south of the city, Rittenberg was told he had a special mission. And I was just beside myself with joy because I thought, now I'm going to be a liaison and communicator between the U.S. government and the new Chinese government. And what a role in history you know, to be dreamed of. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the trip, uh, we stopped and I was accused of being an imperialist spy who came to wreck the Chinese Revolution. And uh, you can imagine I just went into a tailspin. Uh, and then I was locked up in a pitch-black dark room for a year. I didn't know that Stalin had personally sent a written message to Mao asking that I be arrested as the chief of an international spy ring. He would learn about the advent of the new China months after it happened. They put me in a cell that the windows were boarded up and newspaper was pasted over the boards on the inside. And one of the papers was October 1st, People's Daily, in big red print. Having lived through the worst of the last six decades, the devastating famine and ruthless purges, he acknowledges the party's achievements as well as its flaws. When I was in the UN relief program in 1946, the average life expectancy for a Chinese baby in 1945 was figured at 31 to 32 years. Now it's 70-odd years. So you can't cavil at that accomplishment. It's there. At the cost of great sacrifice, could it have been done with less sacrifice? Undoubtedly it could have.